Is it a good investment? How to tell? How to know if a certain uh, real estate property, condo, whatever is a good investment? Yossi Kaplan here, Toronto real estate agent, mortgage broker. And today we're going to talk about how to know if it's a good investment or not. So uh, it's the fall of 2019, almost 2020. Toronto is bustling. Prices are crazy. Um, there's so many openings right now and people are rushing like crazy, try to get condos, try to buy some properties, flip an assignment. How can you tell if it's a good investment or not? Okay, so um, let's look at the various types of properties you can buy and then I'll give you some hints on how to know if it's a good investment or not. Now, the first thing every investor should remember is you don't have to make the deal, okay? You just don't have to. Uh, there's no way you're saying that you have to go and buy this place just because you're the last one in the line. You know, I've had a lot of people come to me like, sell my assignment, help me sell my assignment. I say, why did you buy the inside corner? No view, second floor. Well, it was the last unit in the building. So, well, there's another building coming up later. You can buy something else, even an assignment in the same building. So don't do that, okay? But the first thing, before you even buy it or not, make sure the quality is good. Make sure it's a long-term quality. You know, we talked a lot about this, but first thing you want to look at is see if that investment, can you close on it and would it be good in the long term? That's the first thing I look. Real estate is not a short-term thing. Yes, there are lots of flippers. Yes, we know how to flip. Yes, we do it all the time, which is fine. But you can't do it from a place of stress. You got to do it from a place of confidence, financial confidence. Yes, I can flip you. Yes, I can sell you my assignment, but I don't need your money. Now I'm in a great position. So how to tell if a certain property is a good investment? How to tell a good investment is, first of all, does it work as a long-term investment? Would it serve me for years to come? Okay. If it will, that's great. Uh, that's the first thing I want to look at. If I'm just going to buy to flip it, it's very, very dangerous. You know, I never recommend it, although we do it, but it takes a whole other level of mastery and financial confidence. It means you got to have bags of cash, be able to close uh, to do it. And then you have the option whether you want to flip it or not. So the first thing you want to look at is, does it make sense in the long term? The second thing you want to look at is all the, all the usual variables, but I'm going to repeat them anyways because they're so important. Um, the location in the city, the location within the building, and of course, the floor plan. These are, these are the main things I look at right away. So first of all, location. Now, location is, you know, it's very, it's very subjective because people that come from uh, giant towns in Asia, Hong Kong, Beijing, Shanghai, so on, there's so many massive towns in, in China with 20 million people, you know. Um, they love to be on the subway line. They love to be where transportation is mostly. Um, People that come from those areas of the world usually tend to go for the towers. Then the towers uh, get very busy and the price go up and up and up and up. Now that, that's all fine and dandy. That's okay. When the market's going to come down or if, if something happens with China and 90% of the building was uh, China buyers and, and suddenly all their income is coming from China because you know they have a factory there. They're getting some money from China because of trade or whatever. If China gets blocked... Uh, if the trade with China goes down and, and the yuan goes down or they have some Chinese, uh, internal Chinese stuff that prevents them from sending the money out or whatever it is, uh, that's a big problem. Imagine an entire building is bought by people from the same town. It happens a lot. You know, I come, I come, from, the tribe, I come from the tribal culture. So the whole village, the whole tribe, the whole city, the whole neighborhood, the whole big family tribe is a large extended family, right? That's how we see it where I come everyone's buying oh that's a great deal we all bought in there and then something happened completely out of the blue and you didn't even think about it but not only all the buyers that bought from the same village are affected but also everyone else in in the building and of course the neighbors and so on and so forth so <clears throat> let's say this building behind me well 90 percent of the units were bought by people from one town one country and then that town that country that area of the world has some financial stress that happens, you know, things happen. This is life. Uh, that means that all the people here are going to have a lot of problems completing the purchase. Or maybe they're going to have to sell because they need the money. Or they want to sell the money back home or whatever it is. Or they can't generate enough money to keep it. They were before, everything was okay, but things changed. But if it changed to 90% of the buyers, you know, the entire building can crash. So watch out for buildings, which, you know, it's 100% speculators from the same place. That is very, very dangerous. Now... It's going to happen. It always does. That's what people do. You know, it's the earned mentality. This is good. Everyone's running. Um, but it's, it's very, very risky. So if you can't avoid that, that's great. Better situation is when it's mixed. There's, there's, there's locals, 
obviously we want you know 95 percent local buyers uh, residents or citizens of canada those are the best and some foreign buyers are okay too but you know i like to see it and it's usually i mean i've, I've almost never dealt with foreign buyers uh some people more i i deal with locals but you know you can you can see now the names you can see a lot of quote unquote foreign names mean non-anglo-sax names right uh, but that's canada it's a land of immigrants so by now there's so most of them are like that anyways so they're just reflective of the society we live in um, but if you see a mixed building that's really good because that reduces your risk and i like that okay so that's really good you didn't think about it this way but when there's people from all over investing or it came from all over the canada and the mix and the buildings from all over that's good because that reduces the risk you know if one group gets hit the others don't it's not such a big uh jump it's not such a big you know shock to the system okay now let's talk about the location location itself in the city so you want to be by the subway line that's great but there's a lot of great places to be which are not on the subway line and just as good and that's what you see in these days i've been talking about you know, investing in Toronto outside of uh, the core, investing in Guelph, Kitchener, Waterloo, DTK, fantastic prices, Hamilton, fantastic, uh, Brentford's coming up, Guelph, of course. So these areas, <coughs> and, and even in Oakville and in Etobicoke, lots and lots of new projects. Everything's fair game these days because Toronto is like a thousand bucket foot is like the cheapest you'll find and 2000 is the top you'll find. So